tomorrow, 14 season NBA champion, one of my personal favorite basketball players, went from the Clippers to the Heat to the Lakers and became a key player for the Lakers in 2009 to 2010. Also in 2009, he got married to Khloe Kardashian. This gave me hope because he isn't much better looking than I am. <laughs> but Lamar Odom had a problem. And on October 14, 2015, he was found unresponsive in his ho hotel room due to overdose on prescription drugs. However, Lamar is not the only one with this problem. According to the Center for Disease Control and Drug Prevention, 44 die every day because of prescription drug use. Also, a personal story of mine that hits me more home is my father. My father engaged in alcohol and drug abuse at a very young age, affecting many families. However, I realized how blessed he was to recover and live because 88,000 people die every year because of excessive alcohol use. Now, all of this is bad and it's something that we should realize, but I didn't come here to tell you that this is an epidemic. You don't need me for that. I came here to tell you how to fix this problem, and there are two main ways. That's treatment and prevention. Now, first of all, let's figure out what a drug is and why it's so bad. According to the World Health Organization, drugs are any chemical substance which, when taken into the body, alters its function physically and or psychologically. What does this mean? It affects mental processes and behaviors, perception of reality in the world, level of alertness and response time, and you're at higher risk for infectious diseases. This, of course, includes marijuana and cigarettes because they're what we call gateway drugs, which essentially lead people to go to harder drugs. Why do people do these things, though? Fun, peer pressure, stress, but we all know that this eventually leads to crime, violence, and broken families. So, how are we going to fix this? Well, I came up with a little three-step plan, and this three-step plan is based off of a TED Talk by Melinda French Gates that I happened to see the other day. And this plan, I would like to call it Marketing and Mentory. Now, it's mostly based on prevention, but treatment is included as well. So the first step is to gather data and use it properly to enhance what we're trying to sell. A great example of a company that does this effectively is Coca-Cola. Coke has a team of data analysts that analyze real-time data that they receive, and they feed it back into their product so that they can enhance it. So, how do we apply this to prevention? Our job is to go to these different local communities and do the proper research. Who is affected most and why? What motivates people to do these type of things? The, the answer, the application for treatment is the same. We need to go to these treatment clinics and analyze the data we receive from those who experience all of these people firsthand. Now, this leads me on to my second. We need to use relative, local, and well-known ambitious talent. Going back to Coca-Cola, they used some of the people from third world countries who bought, Coke in, who bought Coke in bulk and resold it as employees, therefore employing these people through small loans and training and boosting Coke sales. Now, how do we apply this to our situation? That being said, Coke realizes who markets to their people better than their people. We need to realize who markets to our generation better than our generation. We apply the data that we have, for example, really realizing that this epidemic affects a lot of the younger generation, and we use it, along with local and well-known talents, in order to embrace not using drugs. A great example of this is Boys and Girls Club and how they use local ambitious talent to fight against drugs. Although somewhat indirectly, Boys and Girls Club prevents many children from indulging in alcohol and drug abuse through their many programs like Date Smart, Art Club, and Passport to Manhood, which I also got the chance to teach. Most of these use local teams with ambitious talent to lead. This leads to my third point, and my last point, up-to-date and relevant marketing. I'm going to leave Coke alone now and go to current day music artists so, uh, and celebrities. Excuse me. The drug glorification in today's society is really ridiculous, and it's a bad thing, and we all realize that. But why do kids still follow and still use drugs? Well, these artists and celebrities associate drug use with an aspirational lifestyle, i.e. fame, money, friends, cars, etc. But how come we don't market in a way that's aspirational? We market in a prevention type way, but we need to market in an aspirational type way and associate not using drugs with an aspirational lifestyle. So, how are we going to do this? 
We have to continue to use the two previous steps that I mentioned before and find new ways to advertise so that we don't just promote staying away from drugs, but we associate it with a nice lifestyle. Now, to conclude, I'd like to end with a little story. This story stands on our school psychologist, Mr. Allred's desk, and it's called The Starfish Story by Lauren Isley. Now, the basis of this story is a little boy who finds a little starfish on the shore and throws it back in the shore. The man nearby asks, well, why would you do that? You can't help the rest of the starfish. And he says, well, I don't know how I'm going to help the rest, but at least I can help that one. This story outlines the attitude that we need to have towards prevention and treatment dealing with drug and alcohol abuse. I'm not suggesting a national campaign that might hit individual communities, but an individual community campaign that guarantees to hit directly to the intended audience. This will eventually cause a domino effect. If this community can do it, then this community can do it. And if those communities could do it, this state could do it. And so on and so forth. Even the simplest effort towards change is a necessary effort towards change. <coughs>